These drugs in an illegal environment are more accessible to our kids because we leave complete control, regulation, and standards up to the criminals. Hi, I'm Ted Balaker with Reason TV, and today I'll be speaking with Neil Franklin. Franklin is Executive Director of LEAP, Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. What would happen if we legalized or liberalized or decriminalized drugs in the U.S. market? You know, people talk about, well, what about the unintended consequences of heading down that road of legalization? Have you looked at the consequences we're dealing with now? You know, you're talking about what could possibly happen, trying to compare that to what is already happening as far as the violence. Cartels in over 230 cities right now, they're growing marijuana in our national parks with armed guards in the trees with AK-47s. Are you kidding me? It seems like, okay, if you, let's say you're in favor of drug prohibition because you don't like drugs right. for, for a variety of reasons, I get that. But it seems like even if you don't like drugs, you really, really don't like murder, rape, robbery, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the clearance rates for, you know, that the FBI keeps, uh, rape, 40% clearance, auto theft, 12%, robbery, 27%, uh, 2008 figures. Basically, this means most of the rapists, for instance, are getting away with it. What would happen if we stopped focusing on policing drug crimes and focused like a laser on things like rape and robbery? I'm so glad you asked me that question. The clearance rate of homicide nationally in 1963 was 91%. Nine out of 10 homicides we solved. Today, let's try 63%. That's a huge drop. And it's obvious that we are focus, focusing our resources from the uh, law enforcement perspective upon prohibition. The average cop on the street, how much of his time is spent protecting the good people from the bad people versus policing victimless crime? The average patrol officer on the street in, in the neighborhoods is 911 driven. And what I mean by that is they're moving from 911 call to 911 call. Many times they're backed up, you know, three, five, ten deep. So they clear one, then they're moving to the next, clear it, clear it, and they're moving to the next. It's just a constant journey from one call to the next. The overwhelming majority of those calls have to deal with, I've got drug dealers on the corner, or it's something related to the illegal drug market. Yeah, we have the shootings. You know, but we wouldn't have those shootings if we didn't have the drug market. What if it were different? What if drugs were legalized? How would the cops that, that you worked with, how would their day-to-day -day be different? We have uh, drug units that have a few hundred people in them. For instance, a, a, an, an agency that has, say, about 3,000 men and women, their drug unit is probably going to have about 10 percent of that, 300 and some odd members into that unit. You could take the majority of those folks, put them back out into the districts, fully staff your precincts in your districts, and with the absence of running 911 call to 911 call, when you do get a call of domestic violence, or you do get a call for a missing child, you can then do the work that's supposed to be done. There was great hope when President Obama was elected that we would have more sensible drug policy. Mm -hmm. How has President Obama done so far? Below average. I give him a D. And the reason I give him a D is because he came out and said, the war on drugs is over. We're going to focus on treatment and education. But the money doesn't reflect that. Two thirds of the money is still in law enforcement uh, and only a third for the Office of National Drug Control Policy for their budget is in treatment and education. And that's suspect. For obvious reasons, people are, are especially worried about how drug policy affects kids. Yeah. Um, you hear commentators like Bill O'Reilly, for instance, is very, very much against legalizing drugs because he's worried that people will take drugs and then abuse kids more often. And I heard him talk about statistics related to child abuse and those parents who are uh, on a substance at the time. From my front line experience, responding to those calls where children are abused, responding to those calls of domestic violence, the drug overwhelmingly being used is alcohol. 
I can't recall ever responding to a call or being involved in an investigation of child neglect or child abuse which involved marijuana as the only drug being used. If marijuana was present, alcohol was surely there. These drugs in an illegal environment are more accessible to our kids because we leave complete control, regulation, and standards up to the criminals. They control the entire market and they control who those drugs are distributed to. And they don't ask for ID. They don't want to know how old you are. They just want to see your money. So drugs are more accessible to our kids in this environment than if we were to control them through regulation and, and standards. I mean, it's a no-brainer. And it seems like the Bill O'Reilly's of the world may have uh, a blind spot, a, a pretty big one in this case, in terms of they, they overlook how the drug war can actually put kids at risk. In Baltimore City, here's an example. We have a 60% a dropout rate for young black males. And they drop out for two reasons, mostly. Number one, they're enticed to go into the illegal drug world because they see the, the bling and all the glitter and, 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 and all that excitement. Number two, they're recruited, recruited quite heavily to leave high school, to leave middle school, and come work for the drug dealers on the corner. And is, isn't another one that the gangs will actively recruit them because they know if they get caught, their sentences will be lighter than an adult? Oh, of course. I mean, that's, these kids are very smart. The, the adults in these gangs and in the business, they, they have kids, hold the drugs, sell the drugs, do most of the activity with the drugs because, as you said, when they are arrested, they get lighter sentences, they get, they get treated differently, and, and rightly so. That's how our system is set up, to give juveniles as many chances as, as possible as it relates to the criminal justice world. A lot of people say, well, you can't you know, legalize or decriminalize drugs, we'd have chaos. Um, they've done pretty much that in Portugal for about the past 10 years. Can you talk about what's happened there? They've seen a significant double-digit drop for school-age children, use of drugs for illegal drugs for school-age children. They've seen a good rise in treatment because now the addicts don't feel they have the stigma about them, so they feel free to be able to come out, seek, and obtain treatment. Additionally, they now have the money to fund the treatment because they're not spending thousands of dollars housing addicts in prison. So they can take a small portion of that money and provide good treatment. New cases of AIDS have dropped by double digits. Success after success after success. And they, and they haven't even ended prohibition. It's still illegal for the drug dealer to sell, so they have that violence associated with the illegal drug market. However, just to decriminalize, they have these successes that are mounting.